All right, Coach Adele is in the building. Yes, sir. He's, out, he's outside, now he's inside. Yeah, <laughs> right? I was outside, and now I am inside. That's the plan, man. Uh, so what a what a week. Nah, I mean, what like a year it's been, but I feel like the last week, 10 days or so, has been kind of that tipping point moment. Would you agree? Yeah, it's been, this has been the week. This has I mean, been this is week. why you do it, right? This is why, like, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I've watched you grind, you know, freestyling, rapping, with the speaker outside of, on every block, at every event, yeah. every subway stop, whatever. And um, this is why you do it. Cause like when you do it on the right block at the right time and Fat Joe walks by, or you do it the one season the Knicks finally start to push it together. Yeah. You know, it's just like, it's about timing. It's a little bit about luck, but it's also about just doing, doing it. it. Right? <laughs> I mean, Seriously. it's corny, but it's like, keep no. doing it, man. Yeah. Did, did you, were, was there any moments uh, have you had any doubts or any time where you're like, I, I don't want to fucking lug this speaker out and go freestyle? I, I don't want to. Never do. Really? I'm like this evil bastard that's in my house and like I forget to charge it or whatever. It's yeah. like this little speaker, you know? It's this thing. And like I've had different speakers and like I've showed up and like hauled it and forgot the mic mm. at like big game days and stuff. You're like, oh my God, like yeah. what did you do, you know? Um, it's just, it's this thing, you know? It's like, I have this relationship. It's like my own little mm -hmm. thing with this little guy. I bring him out, and um, you go to the park one day, and someone pops up. And I just there were little instances that like just gave me a boost throughout the year, mm -hmm. and people seen it. And I was doing outfits. I mean, you seen them in the red mm -hmm. suit, the blue suit, the green suit yep. with Moses. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, everyone, no one wants to go when it's right. raining and snowing. But then I realized, no, this is the time. And like, I used to wrestle. I was a Division One wrestler at Rutgers. Okay. And I'm like, you know, I started listening to a lot of like David Goggins, like really insane shit. That and I'm just like, and I'm like, I'm like, yo, it's pouring rain. I'm like, get out there. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't. Well, it's right. Especially like, if you're going to make video too, it's like, you know, the crazy motherfuckers doing it in the blizzard. Mm -hmm. That's the, you know, anyone can rap. Well, not anyone can rap, but if you're gonna do it, you can do it on a beautiful 75 degree sunny day. But the guy who's still out there when it's, you know, nor'easter coming through, yeah. that's what people are gonna take notice of, and that's what's gonna get you to separate from the pack. I think that's what New York loves. It's like, we don't wanna run, you know, in the nice weather of right. LA. We wanna sure. see a blizzard, and we sure. wanna see blizzard content. You know what's <laughs> funny? I, I, I was know? just listening to, uh, <laughs> are you familiar with Andrew Santino? Gino Santino, the, the comedian? Mm -mm. He's from Chicago, now, he, now he's out in LA. Successful comedian, actor, so he's kinda you know, living the Hollywood life now, but from Chicago, and said the other day that he thinks that cold weather cities, there's a camaraderie. Because yeah. like people go through shitty, dark, cold winters where you get huddled up at the bar and yeah. you watch the football team and you drink the whiskey and, you know, out in L.A., it's like, you know, yeah. I might root for the team, I don't. I might go out, I might go to the beach, I might, you know, and there's none of that. Yeah, it's where it's event. like, we kind of, it's like trauma bonding. Yeah, <laughs> in no, New York, it's trauma, you know? it's trauma bonding. Yeah. I lived in L.A. for nine years. I oh, okay, to LA so you, you've done music. both. I've done Where are you LA. originally from? Jersey. Jersey, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, born and raised in Edison, New Jersey. Now my fam's in Manasquan. So Got it, Manasquan. And, uh, and you, you moved to L.A. when? I like, moved to age? L.A. 2011. Okay, mm -hmm. so so what age, how old are you now? 40. Okay, what ages were you in L.A.? LA from, from like 29 to 38, 39. Interesting. So you yeah. do your 30s in L.A. Mm -hmm. I did it there. And, you know, just touring, just nonstop, just trying to get $100 here to whatever, yeah. anything, touring yeah. with anyone from like Modest Yahoo to MERS to... Sure. To, uh, you know, RZA from Wu-Tang would put me on stuff and yeah. just, you know. Man, I remember when Manus Yahoo first dropped, man. That was it's something. Changed. King Without a Crown was fucking... It changed the world. Yeah. Especially for any Jewish artist that was like, I want to do music, right? I yeah. want to do music. And it kind of created its own sphere. And I think what that time, it was reminding me now what's happened in New York is that people are creating stuff on the street, whether that's Magic or like Buddy the Rat or mm -hmm. Crackhead Barney or New York Nico, well, any of all these all guys. All Nico covers, you know? Yeah, all the stuff, and like it's like a little trip, but like an introduction, and there's like this movement. I've seen one something popped off, like Side Talks to the Moon. Mm -hmm. you know, like it's just creating a whole new community, right? Which is funny too, because I mean, I've been in New York my whole life, and I actually okay. tend to talk shit about New York in a, in a way that's like, I can't stand it, but I'm also never gonna leave, you know? So I feel like I, I, I'm like married to New York, you know what I mean? So I'm like, I can talk shit. I can, I can speak, you know, I hate the, 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 what, it's too crowded, it's too expensive, it's too dirty, it's too this, too that. Uh, and I often make fun of people when they're like, living the, 
Sex in the City version in their mind or like yeah. the Big Apple. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. But then you start, you see shit like this, you, and you watch all the things that Nico covers. And I'm sure you can go to any major city and you find shit that's popping. You find cool people. Interesting yeah. But there does, does seem to be something different, you know? Because you don't got to be co-signed by no one in New York to go get it. Like you well, got to get up, you know what I'm saying? You don't saying? have to be co-signed by anybody anymore, which is the no. beautiful thing. You, you need this. That's you it, know, the you phone. need that, and that's it. But uh, even more so in New York, because you have an audience always, twenty four seven. There's a captive audience. There's that's a, why I moved here yeah. in the pandemic because it was affordable to move to New York, mm -hmm. right? Smart. I yeah. started subletting. People were giving, gave me their their place for half the price. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I could pay the LA this price. Is back from LA. So, yeah, I yeah. was like, I was like, let's get the hell out of LA. I got hit by a car twice in LA during the uh, during the pandemic, and I was like, bad, Yo. huh? Um, like, like I got clipped, and a second time I had to go to the hospital and like fractured collarbone and stuff. And how, how? Riding a bike in a crosswalk, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, and I was like, "Yo, this is the worst." And it was just like, Gotta get back I was safe, like, "This is a sign." Subway, dude. And I'm very like manifesting like signs, and yeah. I'm like, "What a yeah. great excuse to just leave LA because LA sucks." Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I and would never. My big thing LA, was man. like I was the number one Jewish rapper in Koreatown, and now I'm like, you know, the guy rapping on the street in Bushwick. And but yeah. when I came out to New York during the pandemic I was like it was in like the summer 2020 and I was like yo there's like bands outside making like six seven hundred dollars playing and there's captive audiences and like this didn't exist anywhere in the world right in LA it was a ghost town right so I was like man dude I struck the jackpot you know I'm just like here and yeah. then places cheap and I'm making you know what I'm saying I'm just out here too, yeah, yeah closer to my family along. exactly there's Jewish people everywhere <laughs> yeah no, I mean was this all that like but it's just I love the diversity in New York and mm -hmm. I think in New York it's it's not even about there's such a melting pot but like the thing I love is about about being on the street is like I did this interview today it's like that's the foundation we're like building the house right mm -hmm. like my dream mm -hmm. is to sell out Webster Hall yeah but for now I'm playing here but like I just got a you know another opportunity I got this opportunity so now so I'm, let's talk about that so Things have been, you know, you, you do the you do the bald convention, right? I do like, bald fest. Bald fest. Let's Shout just talk out to the, about to the bald it. And that man. was a little viral moment. Yeah, yeah that was a so there's a couple signs here and there. Now basketball season rolls around. Mm -hmm. Knicks fan, you decide to do things outside the garden. Yeah, but I I want to say before you go into, I'm not really I'm a new Knicks fan, and it's mostly because of Anthony from MSG, Anthony with his story on humans in New York, and yep. I was I was introduced him to Nico. And his story made me like fall in love with because like he loved it and I loved it. This dude showed up for me for like a couple things, just yeah. like and I just met him and I was like, yo, I really mess with you. So if this is your community, like I'm in, you cool. know. Well, then I mean the Knicks community right now is one that is it's alive, man. I mm -hmm. mean it's it's like a monster mm -hmm. that's been sleeping for 15 years. We had one little blip on the radar, or we had some, you know, had had a moment with Mello, but like just been waiting, and it seems like it's finally here, and it's. It's one that's good. It's one that's bad. It's one that's like I think. I think right now the, there's some there's the gatekeeping going on from the old fans. There's the new fans. There's bandwagon. There's old school. There's uh, I come from like I hated. James, I still hate James Dolan, and I hate what went on the last 15 years. So there's all of this shit, but it all comes from a place of like passion and and yeah. excitement. And there's just emotion, whether you're angry or excited or a bandwagon or not, whatever. Right. And I so see you, them all walk by. Right. And yeah, so that's I why, see them and all. that's why you go outside the garden right now and you can catch people who have been watching this team for 50 years. You catch people who have been watching for five minutes, you know? Yep. New fans, old fans. Uh, and and that energy, man, like I, I don't I can't think of another team in any sport that has this much energy for, for a regular season, like game one type shit. I mean, people fucking screaming, yelling, going crazy. That side talk video was, you know, you would think it was game seven of the NBA finals. And that, so for you to just be like, you get this as your audience. And the crazy thing was they were on one side and I was on, I was on the other side and I had some crazy thing where like some kids just tried to like, rap battled me and I just like slayed him. I, and then that, I was like, man, that's like amazing. And you, that was happening on the other side of the so, building. So this is how I know that there's signs <laughs> and shit going on. Because uh, me and you have been talking, DMing yeah. here and there, and you sent me a link to that video. You're like, look at this dude. I just like, he tried to grab my mic and I just buried him. And I know that dude. Yes. And so I know Connor. Shout out to Connor. And he, he uh, he's one of the managers and bartenders at Blue, Blue, Blue Hen? Blue, ha Blue Haven. Blue Haven East uh, uh, in Murray Hill. And 
And I don't know what he was doing because he's usually a very like like normal dude. Yeah, and dude. I was like, why are you trying to fucking grab some dude's mic and get in the way? Uh, but I was like, this there are signs, man. The fact that like you a did that signs. out of everyone in the fucking city, you bury him, send it to me. I know him. You're rapping. The Bing Bong thing happens. I have the drama with the the, the fans. Like it's just there's too much going on right now for there not to be some sort of kismet happening. I feel so like there is magic. Karma. Yeah, Fat Joe yeah. told me what. So if Fat Joe comes in the mix, it's just oh like, my God. what is happening? What man? the hell is? Yeah. <laughs> Fat Joe. So I mean, I guess get into that story. But like when I was speaking to him in Colorado after, before he brought me on stage, um, he said somebody came up to him and goes, "Hey, yo!" And he thought it was gonna be like. Like, yo, Fat Joe, it's me. He's like, yo, we got a sick team. And they like didn't even care. It was Fat Joe. He didn't <laughs> so even talk about it. He was just talking about right, the Knicks. Right, yeah. right. Well, yeah. wait, so so people don't know. So coach yeah. is uh rapping outside after the next game, right? Yes, after the next Pouring game. Pouring rain. Yes. If you remember this night, I mean it was like brutal. This was a week ago, yeah. And that's why you're in the you got the umbrella out uh-huh. and and Joe walks by and throws you some bucks, but then grabs the mic and spits like a couple lines from his shit with Big L. And that, I mean, that pops off as like this New York moment. Dude freestyling with the Knicks, Fat Joe, Big L. It's like you can't get more New York than that, you know? No, it's no. like that was all of you New can't. York crammed into into one like, you know, one minute long clip. <laughs> I uh, I was, uh, it's cool crazy because it's the day before I, I just got my New York license. Like down the oh, street yeah? at the DMV. I'm like, this is my first day as official <laughs> New Yorker. And this happened. This city is the best city in the world, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, and, you uh, you right now. As much as I was like making fun of like the the girls who come for sex in the city, or the people who think it's Empire State of Mind, mm-hmm. and then you know a lot of times you get here and it's like no, it's expensive rent and fucking hard hours, and it's not what you think. But you're you're riding that magic carpet right now. You're yeah. doing one of those New York moment type and, shits. And and I thought like, oh man, this is like over. You know, it's like it's coming down. You know, then everyone posted Shade Room World Star, and I'm like, now I'm like, mm-hmm. everyone's hitting me up. Like my DMs are looking. Crazy. Really? Yeah. Love to hear and, that. Uh, and um, then it was at Rolling Loud, and I was like, I need to do it again. So I'm like, I'm going to rap in the rain. The rain was even worse than the night with Fat Joe. And like, people like recognized me at Rolling Loud. Mm-hmm. And I went to Rolling It wasn't like, it was just like complete mayhem. And I'm like, yo, my boy told me Maxim Magazine covered it, right? And um, there's like the single Maxim Bet. And I'm like, okay. And then they wrote an article, and then this event Saturday, and it's like so much synergy. And I'm like, so I like text Nico and I'm like, should I rap with that? Should I just buy a ticket? Like it's in like 12 just hours. And he's like, it. yes, go. It was, yeah. like a, it was so, funny. I, I saw you post that because you were like, should I do A or should I do B? And he just wrote, like, yes. yes. <laughs> and I actually thought he was doing one of those like inspirational, like fucking just do it, whatever you decide, just no, go. Because yeah. then, then he wrote in the comments of your post, he goes, oh man, I misread what you were saying. Yeah, I, but he just said yes. But um, man, that's like, that's you know it, that dude, you I can't, bought it. You can't wait for. Oh, he's, he's in Colorado. It's too far away. Mm. Uh, I'll wait for him to come back to New York. Uh, whatever. Mm. It's like no. That, now is the time. Did you go? Did, had you talked to Joe before that? No. How did I, you? How did you get on stage? Um, <laughs> so I like was like I was like I found out about the events. So I was like messaging people. And they had messaged me back. They're like, well, congratulations. Who's, who's they? Uh, Max and Bet. Got it. That's okay. how they have like a you know sports gambling thing, whatever. Yeah. yeah, and it's with Max and Magazine. So I'm like, yeah, what's up? I used to read Maxim in jail. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, but not. And hell, was, their party was crazy. I was also had cheat codes there. It was a PGDM act, and I'm like, cool. I'm just gonna show up and just. My boys were like, just go watch a Fat Joe concert for an hour, and that's still lit, and just yeah. post it, and you know, worst, like, worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, like there's like seven video camera crews with like backpack, like it's like a mo- it's like a movie scene. Yeah. I was like, yo, this is crazy. They come up, Fat Joe sees me, he goes, hey yo, and just dashed me up. He's like, yo, this is like, he's like acknowledge the fact that this is going crazy. Yeah, and I'm like, yo, man, I'm like, I'm like, yo, bro, you like, you blew me up, blew me up, bro. I'm like, my shit is bananas yeah. right now. And he laughed, and then I was like, "Okay, cool. I'm gonna go watch a Fat Joe concert and eat like some. There's like an open bar, free like yeah. twenty dollar pretzels. Everything's free. They're giving mm-hmm. stuff out. Um, and he he sends down uh, he sends down one of his people, um, and uh, they're like, "Hey, come upstairs. You can come hang out with Fat Joe." I was like, "All right." It was like some like mafia shit, you know? Yeah, what I mean? yeah, I was yeah. Like, yo, what's right, going are on? Are you solo right now? Did you so I, I rolled boy? up like, dolo. Wow. No one, nobody with me. I just bought the flight and I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and, uh, I roll in and, uh, he's like, take a seat. 
And I'm like, oh shit, like what? Made and he's like, it. yeah. And we're sitting like on his couch, and it's like the whole back, you know, he got tons of like whatever, like all, every, you know, it's just yeah. like celebrity style, whatever. Right. It's just hooked up for him. Right. He's about to go on stage. We're in an airport museum hangar, so this right. is in Denver. Just imagine there's like F-16s around. It right. Looks like we're in like some like hangar in like Russia or something, uh, but it's in Denver. And uh, he goes. And his whole DJ team, by the way, is like, we the best from like, DJ Khaled's DJ there mm -hmm. and his whole squad. And he's like, fuck it, turn the camera on. And so we like, we got a whole interview and he's like, oh, I'm just like, I'm like, yo, man, coach, I'm like, Ron, I'm like talking to myself. I'm like, man, you fucking, you did it, bro. Like, you yeah. fucking, this shit's crazy. And then he goes, yo, cue up a beat, like, let's get up a beat. And I'm like, let's do it. Let's do the same beat. Lucini, this is what? He's like, no, no, no. And, and then we start, like, now I'm, like, pretty comfortable with him. We were talking for, like, 20 minutes, go on stage. He's destroying the show. I'm, like, I know yeah. every word to, like, yeah. all the songs. One of the most underrated rappers in my mind as far as the he commercial. He put everybody on. Like, like, but, like, that Don Cartagena album has fucking hits, dude. And he obviously had a ton of success. But I feel like it needs to be mentioned in some of, like, the upper echelons of the heat fucking from digging in the crates through his commercial yeah. shit, like all of it is fucking dope. D I mean, like I kind of grew up off like the Big L, DITC, mm -hmm. and then obviously like really big Punisher. And he like this set, I'm like, this is like I'm seeing an hour fat Joe set. What are you seeing an hour fat Joe set? It's yeah, like, yeah, you, yeah. It costs a lot of money to book to do. Right, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. Like, and um, everything just worked in synergy. And then he brought me out and told a story. And people were like, I know this shit. Like people yeah. were freaking out. And everyone's dressed in costumes because like a mask race is right. even fucking weirder. So are and are you <laughs> you're the type like you're ready to go. It's not like you're like I'm oh, ready to go. Were you like, oh fuck, like I wasn't prepared. Like I'm not I didn't know I was gonna be rapping tonight. Or are you like Well no, nah, once always once you get once you get me the like it's a rap. Yeah. Once you give me my like I've rapped, like I said, you've seen it, I battled the I was I was in BT site for like I rap rap. Yeah, I might yeah. rap on the street or doing costumes, but like at the you end of the day. I rap rap, like Fat Show hasn't done concerts maybe a long time. He's like, oh, I'm doing a podcast. He's with Drew Barrymore yesterday's price is not today's price. Yeah. But there's rappers and artists and there's people who rap rap. Mm -hmm. And I rap rap and yeah. them's rap raps and right. you know, New York City dudes rap rap. Which is so like, I feel like uh, what has gotten popular and commercialized is so not that anymore. Mm. And, and for what, like the rap I grew up on, and what New York was always about, I I don't like to hate on it, but like the, just the mumble shit and the trap shit, it's just not for me. And it's gone in such a direction where I'm like, I, I think of it as like a different genre. I'm like, how could you even compare some of this shit to like bars and punchlines and wordplay and you know? Yeah. And so to to hear you and to like when I heard when I heard Nems, I was like, oh, this is like some fucking New I've known York Nems for rap. I know Nems for twenty years. Yeah, he he's a grimy motherfucker. You know, like, like oh, I've seen shit. him. Like I remember stories of him like getting kicked out of like shady office, like 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 Eminem. Like he was winning battles in Detroit and going D twelve, and like that's the era that we came from. Is that no one was like, I want to make a song or do this. Like the only stage you got on was battling. Right. That's it. Yeah, kill I battled. Kill type shit. Yeah. yeah, and I won the hot, I won the hot, I told Fat Joe, I was like, I won the hot 97 battle in 09. So the weird thing with me is I won that. I played Summer Jam in 2010, opened for J. Cole when he had one song out. I was at Rolling Loud. J. Cole was the only rapper I didn't rap over his lyrics from what I heard. I heard him, it was pouring rain, I bought the ticket. There was, like, I just feel there's like a lot of interesting things that happened in this situation and now like years later, we're all having these different kind of yeah. moments, you know? Well, what I've learned in, in, in my experience is the amount of shit that I did um, that like failed, fell by the wayside, never caught on, but then comes like back around again, you know? If you've mm -hmm. been in it long enough, shit starts to come back. People that you met, you know, thing, doors open for you because you know, 10 years ago, you met a guy who you were cool with, who you didn't, you know, like, I was nice to that guy, I didn't blow him off, and then it came back around and worked out, and this thing that I thought failed, he wants to do now, you know, all that shit is, it just, if you do it long enough, do it right, everything, you realize everything is building, you know, even even like the moments you thought were were steps back or actually still listen, going forward, you know? Listen, I'm sure it's like, you know, bartenders sit on a bar stool, you know, like meet everyone there, you just hang out, you're like, oh, I saw that guy once. And that's what Joe said, he was just like, bro, you never know. Right. And he just, you know, hard work pays off. Also though, the difference is, Fat Joe walks by a million people, probably walks by a few rappers too. Maybe even hears some rappers, but you gotta be able to, like when you can fucking freestyle on the corner, 
that's that's it. That's the X factor. He, that's what he, separates. He people. walked by, and I'm like, he's not stopping. Like I rap about, and like, here comes yeah. Kevin or Mike, yeah, Kenny, just, whatever, and they're like, okay, like this. But I'm like, but he made the decision to, you know, give the twenty dollar tip or whatever. I'm like, yo, it's not as like ridiculous. I'm not even gonna go there. And then I'm just like, yo. <laughs> and then he tried to get on a mic. And there was like a lot of interests. I was like, let me finish my bar. I know, you could tell he, he had his mic out and you were like, let me I finish like, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yo, yeah. so that, and that's funny too, because like this is my mic, dude. You know, you're nah, fat yeah, joke, yeah, yeah. but this is my mic right now. I gotta well, finish my rhyme. We had a discussion about it. He's like, so you don't let other people rhyme. <laughs> and I'm like, nah, I really like unless you're coming through and you're like, yeah, and it's just a vibe. Like if I don't feel the energy right and you're acting hella weird. Like just no. just back up off me, dude. Because yeah. obviously, like your boy Con, like yeah. you just come and it's like, listen, I'm not gonna, you know, give no, you the mic. I'm fucking up my shit, yeah. And because all, like I like bring all my own, you know what I mean? Yeah, like I work hard here. Absolutely, yeah. everyone. But, but I would say Fat Joe's world. different, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> and uh, and so like um, when you so that line was like, hey, yo, um, come and take a picture. And then I'm like, yo, my girlfriend's right there. And then he takes the mic. The line was, but she ain't no 76er. Right, right, So right. in the, on stage, was something like, yo, Fat Joe, take a picture. Yo, my girlfriend's right there, but she ain't, ain't no, no 76 And I got to say the line, and for me, I was like, okay, this, this mission has been completed yeah, to some circle. level. Yeah, yeah, this mission has been completed. And even some more, like, manifestation shit, Fat, Fat Joe gave me $20, right? Everyone's, everyone's like, that became a discussion piece. Like, why didn't Fat Joe give him 50 or 100? Mm -hmm. Or why didn't he give him zero? He didn't, Fat Joe. Right. Um, I randomly walked out of the place. It was like it was like ghost town, right? It was like 2 a.m. My flight's at 6. I'm like staying up and flying back to New York for Halloween because I'm like, I ain't missing Halloween in New York, right? right, I'm just, right. Whatever, I'm still going to dress up and everything. Yep. Um, I find $20 on the street randomly in an empty street. And I'm like, this is it, that's bro. Those kind of things, this is man. God. That's And the last time that's really happened to me was when I got locked up, when it was 2004 when I got sober, right? I was running from the police, right? And Rutgers University is where I went. And mm -hmm. I was, at that time, I was like selling Coke and XC. And that was like part of my, that was my life from like 2001 after I quit the wrestling team to 2004. And I had already done time. And I ran back into school. And there was a moment where, the drugs dropped out of my pocket or I threw it and then like someone picked it up and police didn't find it and I was like, this is a moment or sign above that's giving me a chance to just run with something mm -hmm. and get out of whatever I was mm -hmm. in. And for me, there were so many things that led up to this moment the other day. I was with Gaten Matarazzo from Stranger Things the night before. I posted a video. He seen me. I was rapping. This guy has 13 million followers. I know Gaten. I rapped with him before. Mm -hmm. He's just, you know, he's, kidding. he's, he's Dustin from Stranger Things. Yeah. And you're like, not to the moon. Then right. the thing would come, like, but something, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it, and you know, you gotta go to the gym to get abs. It doesn't right. like, it doesn't like happen, guys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think now the story is becoming like a story of inspiration to other people to like, he could do it, Fat Joe put him on, I'm gonna do music for another three years and just give myself a shot, right. or I'm gonna do a podcast and I got 20 listeners, but if you keep going, if you don't, like, if you, you don't know who your next guest is. You know well, that's why I think you also have to inherently do it Cause you like it, yeah. Cause like you like to rap. I like to podcast. Like, I, I there was a, there was a long time. I still don't really check like my numbers, my stats, and my downloads. Cause I just want to fucking do it, you know. Right. It was and, just dope. It's and dope. if you do it for that reason, like it's not as real. It's not as raw. It's not as normal. Where it's like, yeah, I'm just doing it because I enjoy this shit, and the rest is kind of gravy. I've never. The only job I had since I got clean, I like worked at a rehab and I delivered pizza, and I like started rapping. And then I had, 2012, I had a Super Bowl commercial. My boy Jesse Shack and I had a Bud Light commercial. Oh the, yeah? The Here We Go. What was that? Here We Go, Here We Go, Here We Go. And it was my song, Cellular Phone. Bam, bam, ba, bam, bam, nick, oh, nap, pat. And then that gave me the big shot. But what I did wrong there was that I stopped. I was like, oh my God, I have like some bread. I was just, you know, mm. slowing. And my old roommate, Lonnie, who was a, tw he made $12 an hour at working at a rehab, riding a bike, and, um, and now he's like, you know, owns re now he owns stuff. Now he's worth like the million. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He goes, take that damn speaker and go rap and go rap. And like, so I, this moment has happened to me a few times in just different areas of my life where I'm like, how often does this happen? If I keep doing it like this, how many, how often will it happen? Right. You know what I'm saying? If I mm -hmm. continue my workflow and mm -hmm. when will we catch a break? And you really don't know. Like Joe said, you never know. But like, to just be on it and just do it because you believe that it's better off to get 10 videos with 
800 views versus one video with 8,000, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or whatever the yeah, denomination yeah, yeah. is, it's just right. like you gotta make it. You Go, know what I'm saying? Keep doing it, yeah. So that's that's where I'm at with it. I'm like, okay, what am I what am I posting next? I gotta do something, uh, some Jew Jewish thing, some election day stuff, some Hanukkah stuff. Right. Okay, where the holiday Hanukkah's stuff. Gonna be good. Yeah, Hanukkah's. Hanukkah's oh, be bro. Big. Yeah, I'm like Rosenberg, like Peter Rose. Like, what, yeah. what are we doing? Let's tell this story. I got like a small tour with the student of scene black. I got a new music video out. Sure. My, everyone's finding my old shit. And I mean, the freestyles too is something that you know it's it's one of the most. Impressive things I've ever seen. Anybody I know who could freestyle is like, it to me. It's it's one of the coolest things. I don't even understand how your brains work. I don't get how you guys can do it. it I makes can no explain. Sense. Can I you can explain? Yeah. All right. So, we're here, right? We're like we're in this spot, and we're gonna start over here, right? And this is point A. We're on thirty fourth and seventh, and somehow you have to get to. Uh, Washington Square Park and in between you're gonna like fill in the blanks and you're, these mm -hmm. like roadblocks come up and and then, then your main goal is to get there so it's sort of like you start here and I, I see like this word is you know stool and this word is interesting and you're like okay I'm gonna talk about walking to the bar and then you know however I do it. It's just wild though because I mean I can understand that concept but those roadblocks and trying to juggle those two words most of the time your mouth's not gonna, you know. How do how do you what do you do when you're podcasting and you're like this shit is stale? Like what do you what's your thing? I mean, like in 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 on a uh, grand scale, like in the moment. On like on a personal level, like you're like I'm not really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like, you, I kind of just went through that recently, uh, where I was like, everything I was saying was just kind of like I, I didn't have any confidence in it. I was just like, ugh. And so I started. I got back to. Um, Every time I had like a funny thought or something interesting, I wrote it down. I feel like if I, I have so many thoughts like in and out of my head mm -hmm. that I'll be like, oh, I'll do that for, like, on the podcast. I'll do a segment on that. And then, you know, a couple of days go by, it's time to do the podcast, and I, I don't remember any of that shit. So I've stockpiled like everything that I have thought of for the week, for that day, whatever, to be like, I need to make sure that I have a organized, collected like thought. Whereas, mm -hmm. cause a lot of times I would just kind of, Oh, I'll just do a segment on this. I turn the mic on and go. Almost the, the my version of freestyling doesn't really work, where it's like I need to have a thought that I've fleshed out a little bit in my mind right. and then go. So it's about like amassing enough uh, interesting shit to get back to like feeling that that segment like had some meat to it. My like a lot of things. So like I had this moment that no one really knew about. I had a show in Penn State like the just a few days before like a college gig. I was like, super stoked. I went to Penn State and they had homecoming the next day. Okay. Um, or no, this yeah it was yeah the homecoming which was they went into nine overtimes. Okay. Versus Illinois. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh man, this would be so sick to rap outside the game. But my homies, um, like this dude Echo, is a rapper I follow, and he was like, they were playing in a uh, like Jersey, and I'm like, I'm gonna go try to meet them. I'll go and I'll go watch the game. Now I went there. And you know, you're playing it like, I don't know, like some lunchtime thing, and there's like, I don't know, people are like doing their homework and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah, whatever, yeah. you go for the bread and like you're like, all right, you know, I'm gonna go rock this thing and I'm gonna impress everybody. And they're like, hey, do you wanna rap in the parade, which is the homecoming parade, which is the largest homecoming parade in Penn yeah. State, like in, in, in for, run by college students. And I'm literally like, with the same speaker I brought here, rapping in front of thousands of people in Penn State, like, we are Penn State. And, was yeah, yeah, yeah. and I used to pick Penn State in all the NCAA, like old Genesis video games and stuff like that. So I was like really, you know, down for the, yeah. the paternal vibes. And, and, um, People, I thought I was like, yeah. then I came home and watched the game and I was like, wow, thank God I didn't stay because they, they lost Illinois. But yeah. I was like, yo, I'm like, something's happening. Mm -hmm. It's not me. There was like a shift in the universe. And like, I, I have to like lean into it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, go, go. And at MSG, and this is what not people know, and I told this, before the thing happened with Fat Joe, Mark Ronson walked by me and put me on his Instagram, and he's like, anyone rapping over Lucini is amazing. And then this dude, Acapella, who Joe has a song with, who's from like Latin America, he has like a million some followers, rapped with me in all Spanish. And I have the video, and I didn't even like post it because it was stuck. I was trying to post it, and the internet happened, and then uh -huh. my girl like filmed, and then the rest of the night was over. But like, I was telling him, you're like, yo, there's like, it's, it's something happening. Yes, yes. It's not. It's not me, man. It's not me. No, it was but just it's that. but it's like it isn't, but it is. Yeah, we have it's to happening be there. to you for a reason. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and if you want to say that it's just happening, but it's like, you know, you're there. 
Like, it could, maybe it's going to happen, but you're not going to be on your couch. You're going to be out like, at the fucking garden making sure you're the one that it happens too. Yeah. And I think that's like the key to it. I just got booked. I was, out, I was telling him that I was, I was outside yesterday. And I did the garden again because Joe said, just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, keep doing mm -hmm. the garden. So Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to do it, you know. And uh, I got booked for, and I have a show with like this, this group called like Metaverse or Metaverse. I'm fine, like mispronouncing it. Yeah. And, and, and they have like a show at Terminal 5 with a less owner. Like, we want you to come to Terminal 5 and we want you to play the private party. And they're like, I was like, bro. Oh. And, they, and they didn't even know the Fat Joe thing happened. That was just separate. So good things you know, happen, man. Yeah. So I think you know what I'm learning this week is I like take a little bit back to reflect. Is that you know my brother, my brother um, was a fan of a fan of you guys, Zach Evanash. He does uh, underground strength coach. My brother used to put. He was the first strength trainer from ev any of this. Like mm -hmm. you see everyone doing strength training, cross mm -hmm. fit, and he was like lifting tires in like the early 2000s and right. putting signs on trees and training people for five bucks. And he's like, I hate views, I hate numbers. I don't. He's like, I hate. He's like family. Dude, just do the work. It's all about do the work, do yeah, the yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. And and do the work is like, I, when I listen to him or David Goggins, I, I started running half marathons every Monday. So I ran half marathon, half marathon, half marathon. Jesus and then a lot, yeah, I'm just like a savage. Like this week, I'm probably trying, I'm trying to run the New York City Marathon or the LA Marathon if I go to Complex Con. And I've like, I'm just like ready to do so it. So you I'm literally like, go, I'm going go, full, go. full yeah. beast mode. And then, like, I'm probably going to be, like, partially paralyzed the week after. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but, you know, that's my addictive uh, tendency is, like, mm -hmm. sort of when you don't Channel use any, when, only you, when you don't drink anymore, smoke anymore, do anything like that, like, no antidepressants, no nothing. It's really up to you to, like, you channel your energy. And I had to, like, stop. I journal every day. I had to stop today on the train, and I'm like... Go enjoy yourself on Kevin's show. Yeah, I man. Wrote that shit down. I'm happy you came and through. And I'm like, I'm like, don't be like, I got to this. You know what I'm saying? Be honest yeah. with people. You know what I'm saying? Tell them your story because people see me rapping on the street as much, like they don't know what I've been through. They didn't know I what I was like arrested or was in rehab or right, was in right. DMX or I tore. You know, my all these people and have sh I have raps with everyone, but. Nobody cares, you know what I'm saying? Nobody cares until they do. And that was my album called Nobody Cares Except You, because it's like you see a little bit and a little bit, and mm -hmm. now hopefully, you know, the podcast, every podcast starts out with 20 Absolutely. listeners. Right, right. I, have, I have one I'm about to start back up. Yeah, I was gonna say, you can do that. Like, I mean, Hustle, it's called Hustle Beach. They have like 11 episodes up. Let's go, called, man. It's, it's like, it Dive would be in. here, it would be here, and then, um, you know, it would be like a beach, essentially, and we're just like, you know, birds and I stuff. Love it, man. And, that's you know, what it's I about, wanna, dude. I want it, to. It's just good. It came together like New York for me to have basketball coming back, and you see like hip hop thriving. Yes, it's like that is what the city is and always was, and I'm happy to see like it. It is that way again. Are the Knicks gonna be the Eastern Conference champs? Bing bong. I mean, <laughs> you know, anything can happen. Like. They look fucking good. I think the problem with the Knicks right now is that closing out games is going to be tough for them. Like, Julius Randle is a beast, but in today's game, down the stretch, you need big buckets. It's hard to go I to a big game. I couldn't believe that you know? it switched over from, like, us up by, like, 13 to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. that Raptors game, uh, it, it, it changed fast. It went real quick. But, but I mean, they, they are a good young team that should be around for years to come, which is all that Knicks fans have been asking for, you know? Obviously, you want to get to the top. But if for so long it was like, let's just, how about we just not be embarrassing? You know, how about we just put on, uh, you know, put out a product that people can watch, and that's where I really, you know, a lot of people did not ever respond to any of my emails or calls or whatever, and mm -hmm. now I've gotten hit up by everybody. I bet, and it's, it's funny really, how that it's, happens. It's really, it's really dope, but. It's, it makes me feel like a better as a person that I don't put anyone ever on black. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. like, it's not anyone else's fault because everyone's going through their own journey. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, I've been a hater, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Like, mm -hmm. we, everyone has been a hater on somebody. Yep. Even we have it in our own family trees and stuff Definitely. like that. But for me, I'm just like, just keep giving, keep being kind, keep showing up, keep showing love. That's why I knew you would like the bing bong stuff from yeah, dude. So I, I got, could we show it yeah. to them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll show them to the. It's bing bong everywhere, man. That was what. That's what the whole drama was about. It's like, listen, Bing Bong. This you got is Bing it. Bong from Nems. You got Bing Bong from Side Talk. Oh my God. <sighs> and the thing is, the thing is, I know, um, you know, I've known him for so. We've known each other. Some of those rappers have known each other for so long, and 
a lot of people are like, you're still rapping? And your bro like, yo, bro, yeah, like man. I'm outside the Knicks game and yeah. I'm selling sweatshirts, right. having fun, eating soup at the bar, at the, the Irish the bar across Joe, the street. Man. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, and good now things, I'm on, good things happen, and now bro. I'm backstage with Fat Joe eating the $13 salted pretzels that I got hooked up for <laughs> at a fucking airport hangar. Or whatever. Mama, you we know? made it. Yeah. <laughs> nah, and then tomorrow I'm going to be rapping at some, you know, synagogue or speaking about influential stories. And I just did something in the UK. And they're mm-hmm. like, wow, like, what are you, you know, because a lot of what happened to me is a lot of people were sending me their music. Mm-hmm. So what I realized is a shift is that is like when you see somebody get put on on any moment and they're like what they do with it and how they act or whatever, just even whatever, if you get 50,000, any amount of views and stuff like that, it gets other people excited to make them inspired to make stuff. Yep. So it's like this chain reaction. So what's happening in New York, specifically with the Knicks, is it's like sports, music, hip hop, celebrities, Tracy Morgan's like ready to, he's like at all, you know what I'm that, saying? That is kind of the New York difference. Is like when, when it happens, it happens. It happens. Yeah, like yeah, a lot so, of people get involved, people get excited, people want, you know, the Knicks get good, the fans are fucking there. When somebody puts on, they want, they, they get behind it. They want to see like New York thrive. Yeah, and that never happened to me in LA. <laughs> no, because everyone's like out for themselves. And, and New York's cutthroat too. No, but, yeah. but there's something about that, like, you know, you know the same people and, and you all are like all kind of on your path and it's intertwined. And, and I mean, there is it, something, it's a little corny, it's a little like foo foo, but, but, but it's something, not. Yeah. But it's not, dude, because because in the end of the day, the, the only time people get really sad or come together is when someone dies and then <laughs> they give them all the flowers there because people didn't know I battled DMX until he passed away. Right. And but that they, happened. Right. But that happened and people posted it and and the only way that happened was because of RZA. And RZA told me the time I battled DMX, he says, Yo, you can't show up to the BET thing, they're throwing an audible. He was coming out with the man with the iron fist. You remember that? Mm-hmm. With Dave Batista and, and from showing up to all the Wu-Tang shows, and then he was like, no, and then they would reject me, and then Dave Batista came to one of my shows, and then mm-hmm. he's like, you can't come, but now they're doing Audible, and you can, and now I'm with like, old dirty bastard son, and all that, no one even cared, and then when I walked out, I told DMX, I rap, and he goes, spit something, right? and that was just like a moment, and it gave me a boost to say, okay, make a song with another friend, so now, you know, obviously, now, obviously, the next thing to do is make a song with Fat Show. I mean, it's, uh, it's only right. Dude. Yeah, it's only right for me. <laughs> I could be dreaming, but, you know, uh, my whole career is faith-based without religion or anything. Too. It's just like, I believe that that's where I belong. Right now, I'm here, and that's like our goal to get there. Like you said, it's freestyling. Yeah, it's Just freestyling, man. Should we, uh, should we do a freestyle? Yeah, let's kick something. What do you want to do here? Um, all right, let's go. Ready, guys? You guys ready to go? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. What's going on, Barstool? My name's Kosha Dills. We're about to start rapping for y'all. Yo. Okay. On the microphone, the flow so pure. Uh, passing me things from K- Kevin Clancy. Word up. Uh, everybody know the flow like yes, please. Shout out to Right Said Fred. I'm just too sexy. Big sexy. Okay. Don't text me. Everything after the game like check, please. Uh, represent, I get a job. It's playing to promise. Y'all rappers ain't stepping to me. Are you garbage? Yeah, promise land. I I am not a psycho, put it down like this and it's time to recycle. Everything I make the music, I'm Jewish, I'm seven foot over rappers like Patrick Ewings. All I do is do things cool, raw, even if I don't play no bar stool sports. Represent, I do the rap moves with a fat crew, but Kevin Cancely, I'm bald with no shampoo. A right down microphone, represent, I sing songs, see me at the Knicks game, everyone yell bing bong. That's right, I represent the worch, and if you're looking at me, it's time to buy some merch. Um, Hava Nagila, I'm sober. Shout out to this guy with pink flavored tequila. I do in the rap soon. I'm thinking the Il McCoy, like David Portnoy in Cancun. Feel the joy, I could kill a koi. Represent, I get a damn. WD 40, drinking all these 40s. One minute, man. Uh, yes, I'ma feel it like a rap on scene. You could use this as Vaseline and gasoline. Uh, I have a dream to rap with the hard chewel. Yeah, hell yeah, grayness. It's hot. I got bald heads like Fast and the Furious, but I name, I put it up for Jay Z and the Rock. Yeah, um, every time it's ne- negligence, getting paid. The Rock should run for president on election day. I'm simple with the verse. I kill it and rehearse. And hope you guys go to my site and buy all my pickle merch. <laughs> yeah, I'm Dills in the house. Kevin Clancy put the friggin' pickles in their mouth. Anything else to rap about? Oh, hold it down. Your boy sweatshirt right there. And it's all on the ground. Um, 
Shout out to Cousin Murray and Cousin Mike I'm living my fucking life I hope you feel in the tight like This is acapella Yes, I like to rap, boy But I'm real hip-hop I don't usually hang out with sad boys <laughs> Come on, make a million fear When you get old and 40, get some children here Koshi deals, I got umbrella and kicking rap flows And shout out to my favorite rapper from the Bronx fam Yo, whoa, yeah, I had to put it down People be like, yo, are you from the underground? I kick it slide talk And every time I'm in New York In the streets like New York Nico inside talk Wow, when I yell freestyle, y'all yell freestyle I'm rapping old for Jackie until I go see now I never amateur with flows Triple X, rest in peace, but get an amateur with your show Whoa, cameras and growth, feeling like it's fair Throw your hands in the AirPod like Yes, I'm fly, yes, I'm fly Come on, Kevin, it's been like two weeks since you exercise Yeah, text a girl or text a guy Don't care if you have sex or girls or sex with guys It's Barstool Sports, baby, let's go Go, Shadil, beep, beep, beep Bang, bang My dude, hey. unbelievable I'll wow. never understand how you guys do that shit Oh, and Absolutely we did it, we incredible. did it, we did it, we does it, and we're going to do it tomorrow again, dude. Unbelievable, man. That's oh, great shit. Man. That's the most random collection of shit ever. I don't know yeah, how you can dude, do it. Yeah, dude. I was just like, what else is there? <laughs> I hope you guys... Oh, God, I got to tell you, man, when the, my favorite part about the Fat Joe show was when he... Made, did the song Make It Rain and yeah. I went to the crowd and I was like, let's fucking yeah. go. <laughs> the umbrella's a nice touch for sure. Yeah, dude. I feel like the penguin, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> anyways. I love it, man. Great shit. All right. The holiday season is approaching. All I want for Christmas this year is YouTube subscribers. We Please. Got, we got to get to 100,000. I want Please, that 100,000 plaque. Subscribers? Uh, we've got a goal for uh, for all you out there, for everybody. At 100,000 subscribers, Polly Feidelberg will join us on the show, maybe. Well, if not, we'll probably have to trick her into it. But at 100K, you will get Polly content. So subscribe. Click the bell uh, icon so you get notifications so that you're always watching. Leave a comment below. Talk about it. Post about it. Spread word. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. 100,000 subscribers on KFC Radio for Polly Feidelberg. Let's make it happen.